This video here is for MYP students who are doing design and they're preparing their summative doc, uh, assessment document criterion C and they want to get top marks uh, for strand four. So I'm going to talk you through what you should include and guide you through uh, the report for strand four so you can get top marks. So let's start with the assessment criteria. It says here, for top marks, you need to fully justify the changes made to the chosen design and plan when making the solution. So the key here is about changes. Um, so here's what I would recommend, how to start this. First of all, just think about whatever it is you made, start thinking about all the changes that you've made along the way. So changes are actually a significant part of the design process. Now, sometimes you make big changes, sometimes you make very small changes, sometimes you make lots and lots of changes, sometimes you make wholesale changes. So change is, making changes or iterations or improvements or edits is part of the design process. So for getting top marks for this, it's time for you to think about those changes, identify the changes, explain the changes and justify these changes. So that's my three step plan. So first of all, just come up with a big long list of all the changes that you've made through the design, through the creation phase of this. Um, so I'm recommending somewhere between five and 15. Now, it sh if you're having trouble thinking about, now what, what, what did I change? I'm not sure. Just start thinking about any, like it from any different angle. So maybe you've changed, let's say you've written something. You may have changed a color. You may have changed the color of the title three times, four times, five times. Try this color, no, try that color, try that color. You may have changed the font. You may have changed, changed it many times. You may have changed the size. So if you really think about the details, it won't be hard to identify many, many different changes. Now you also may have encountered some kind of a problem and you need to start, you needed to start over. So that's a big wholesale change. So step one, just list all the changes. List, list as many, just brainstorm and come up with a nice big long list of all the changes that you've made during the creation phase. Next step, this is step number two. Now, revisit your list, and now for each item, you need to explain it in greater detail. Now again, remember somebody else is reading this document, so when they read it, they should understand what you actually changed. And one of the easiest things to do, rather than writing lots and lots of words, you can just, you can demonstrate this with images. So if you can take some photos or screenshots or whatever it might be, and just identify some of the changes that you made, it'll save you a lot of work with writing. So the key now is to explain or describe exactly what it was you changed uh, so that somebody reading it will understand, oh, okay, I fully understand what it exactly was that you changed. Now do that for every single uh, change that you've got on your list. So you're expanding your list now and you're now outlining or explaining or describing it. So what we're thinking about is the what. What was it and how did you, what and how. What did you change and how did you actually change it? Now remember, if someone's reading your report and they're not an expert in the field, just say you're doing some coding and somebody who doesn't know anything about it, coding is reading this report, you explain it to them. I changed this string, I changed that, I changed this code from here to here uh, by doing this. So it's very easy to follow. Now, up to the third stage. If you want to get top marks, you need to identify the change, explain and describe the change and outline the changes, but you also now need to justify. So this is what the why. Why did you actually make that change? So each bullet point or each, each uh, ident uh, uh, change that you've identified, once you've described it, outlined it and explained it, you now need to give it a reason why you actually changed it. Now I've outlined a few, few of them, a few nice phrases that you can copy and paste if you like. Basically, it gives a justification, it explains the why. Now, along the design process, along the way, there should have been a stage where you had your teacher or your friends or the client or the target, the target audience have a look at what you've actually made. And once they've done that, they should make a few suggestions. Oh, I like it, but maybe you should do this. Oh, maybe this. Would it be better with a longer introduction? Would it be better with a different color? Whatever it might be. Now, when you get this kind of a feedback, you then make a change and you respond to that feedback. So that's a really good justification. I made this change, this is what I changed, the reason, the why, why did I do it? It was to respond to the client's feedback or peer feedback. 
Another thing is better meet the design brief. I made this change so it's a better match to respond to the needs of the design brief. Another really clear and obvious way to justify your change is by looking at the design specifications. You've created a list of design specifications. So look at one of them. Did you meet it? Did you change it? So maybe you need to say, I made this change. Why did you make it? To better respond to the needs of this particular design brief. What else? I've got here for a better user experience. Uh, another reason you might want to do is make a change is to make the product more user friendly. So you're thinking about the audience, the person using your product. You may have wanted to, you may, may have made the change to improve the uh, form or the aesthetic of your product. Um, maybe you've changed it to make it more stronger, more stable, more comfortable, more attractive. Uh, also, you can try and revisit the original problem. Way back in Criterion A, there was a problem that was presented to you. You may have made the change so it better responds to that problem. So these are all really strong reasons why you've made your, your changes and that will help you get top marks because you are justifying the changes that you made by, by, by providing very strong reasons for your change. Uh, last thing, pro tip. Now, if you really analyze the assessment criteria here, it actually does say uh, changes to the chosen design. Now, if you think back to criterion B, Remember during Criterion B, there was a stage where you came up with a bunch of ideas and then you decided on your best design and then you presented and did more drawings. That's your chosen design. So why don't you think back to your Criterion B, what was your chosen design? Compare that to your actual finished product. And if there are any differences, you need to say, it's an improvement. Don't say um, here, you don't want to use the language that you start to say, oh, I had problems, that's why I changed it. You want to actually give good reasons for them. So instead of saying, um, I, maybe you had a dream and you had a plan to make something that was actually high, high quality, but you didn't have the budget or you didn't have the materials. Rather than writing, I changed it, uh, because my teacher wouldn't let me have the materials or I couldn't access it, you come up with a stronger reasons. For example, this was my original plan. However, I changed the fabric, I changed the wood, I changed the material because it's more cost effective. Now, this is a stronger uh, reason. I wanted to make my product more cost effective. I wanted to make my product simpler. Uh, I was concerned about the time and I needed my product ready at a specific time. So regarding time management, I made some changes. So don't talk about your problems so much. I wanna, if you did, and now just be aware, of course in the design process, process you're gonna have problems, lots and lots of problems, and you've gotta come up with some solutions. So keep that in mind when you're writing this section, but make it a very positive spin. Try and think about, I've made changes for a better product. I've made this change for a better product. So keep it positive. Um, and the other pro test is don't forget there's a key word here. You're supposed to talk about your changes you've made to your chosen design and the plan. Now this gets neglected by a lot of students. They just think about their product, 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 product. But remember, you've created a detailed plan. Go back and revisit your plan that you created and uh, talk about some changes you've made because this, this is again part of the design process. So perhaps you were sick that day or perhaps the weather prevented something. So you do have to make your changes. I, I planned to paint it, but the paint didn't arrive. So you need to somehow talk about your changes to your design plus your plan. Okay, now I've talked about changes and changes and changes. Here is a definition I found on the internet about change. So change is the thing. Make something different to alter it or modify it is the definition. Also replacing something or something else so making it newer and better. So again, we're, trying to, we're talking about the changes, but we're talking about the changes in a positive way. Okay, let me show you some images to help explain this in more detail. So changes are part of the design process. So look here is the Firefox uh, logo. And again, I'm revisiting that idea that it's easy for the reader of your assessment to actually see the picture. So rather than trying to write a ton of words, trying to explain the details, just show a picture. and it, and, the and, the, and it makes obvious for the assessor where the changes have occurred. So keep that in mind, some before and after photos are really a really effective and quick and easy way to illustrate some changes that you've made. 
So change, again, is part of the design process. If you're a user of Instagram, just look how many times their logo has changed over the time, and it's so easy to see the changes when it's represented visually like this. So keep that in mind. Visuals, if you can provide some visuals, it's very easy for you to write your report, and it's very easy for the assessor as well. Uh, now, look here, there's an original, maybe this was the original one, and here is the end product. So you can see it should be better product. That's the kind of theme of this one. Uh, now here's some students work with coding. Again, look, this is illustrated with images. They've changed the introduction. It's so easy. They've taken a screenshot, screenshot, and added uh, a little bit of annotation, and it's very obvious. Quick and easy to prepare this, and easy for the assessor. Um, so here again, this is uh, represented visually. The student has changed the title. So it's easy to identify. This is demonstration, demonstrating identifying some changes. Now to get top marks, we do need to uh, dig a bit deeper. So here, uh, here are some, so what, what would might be wise is to have some visuals, but also you need to add some words. And what are you adding? You're identifying what was changed, explain the change or outline the change, but justify. Why did you make that change? It's very important if you want to get top marks. So yes, you will need to add some words if you want to get top marks, because you need to justify it. Give me the why. Convince me that these changes have actually pr produced a better product. Now here's a very good uh, represented representation of the before. Now this student actually did create this, and then they, from feedback from friends, feedback from teachers, they actually made lots and lots and lots of changes. Um, so the visuals are very easy to see the original design and the, fin the end product. Uh, and then they doubled down and actually highlighted and outlined. Now there's a one here that was interesting. It's talked about an Instagram post and adding music. Why did they add music? Because according to nature, neuroscientists, blah, blah, blah. It's like, wow, that's a really strong reason. So if you could justify with a little bit of research as well. I've changed the color. Here's it. And why did you change the color? Because green, according to research, green has this kind of emotion. It's like, oh wow, that's a very smart change. Now I'll give you a little secret. You can justify most things that you've changed. So for example, our title. I changed it from uh, title case to all uppercase. Why? Okay, what, can you do some research? You can add a little bit of research to just justify why you changed the font, the, the cap capitalization. You can also do some research and find out which fonts work best for which response. So which fonts are best for kids? Maybe that's your target audience. Which fonts are best for uh, teens? Which fonts are best for this product? So if you're having trouble justifying, just a little bit of research adds a lot of weight to your justification. Don't forget your plan. You need to talk about your plan and how it changed and what, what, what occurred and why you had to make some changes along the way. If you didn't make some changes to your plan along the way, something's not right because in the design process, plans always change. If something doesn't go right, you have to do this, you had to do this, you had to adjust. So you need to address that at some stage. Okay, I'll conclude with the differentiation and assessment. So when your teacher is assessing your work, if you've come up with an outline of some changes, so you've identified a few changes and outlined them, you'll get a maximum grade of four. So just be aware if you have, if you, you need to outline. So when I mentioned come up with a list to start with, you're not gonna get any marks for that, but you actually need to add a few more words. So outline, explain them a little bit so you can get a score of four. You'll get a score of six if you describe the changes. So outline's quite brief, and some, uh, so outline is kind of a brief uh, a score out of four, and then the description, a description of all the changes will get you a score of six, but if you fully justify the changes, you'll get a score of eight. So that's how the assessment works, um, and I wish you all the best for Criterion C Strand 4.